Good afternoon, Rich Nass, Executive Vice President with Open Systems Media, here for this week's segment with Ray Zinn, who, as you know, because you listen to these segments every week, is the former CEO of my craft. He's a, a blogger. He's my weekly interviewee. He's an author, and uh, he's an all-around good guy. Good afternoon, Ray. How are you? Well, thank you, Rich. I'm doing fine. Thanks for asking. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay, so... Um, Let's talk this week about the consolidation that continues to take place in our industry. There was a report out this week that uh, one of those vendors who's uh, on the acquisition trail is reporting record revenues. Um, And I actually want to ask you two separate questions. One is about the consolidation, whether it's good or bad or indifferent. But the other thing is about the reporting structure. What what I've seen is is that this company showed – record revenue, but is that just a function of having two companies put together? Shouldn't we be looking at different metrics besides simply revenues? So let's tackle that one first. How does that work? Is, I mean, is that a fair metric? Well, it depends upon how they uh, classify it. If, if they refer to their, what we call the organic business, which is the business that they developed internally, then they would, they would spell it out. They would say, okay, organically we did X revenue, and then inorganically meaning that through acquisitions or other means, um, you know, like if they were to acquire a product line, you wouldn't have to necessarily acquire a company. You could acquire a product line or something. Uh, then that should that, – that if you combine the two, then that will be the total revenue. But legitimately, they should spell out what their organic growth is that's internal – versus their external or, or, or inorganic, which would be the revenues received from the acquisition of the product line or the company. Does that make sense? Yes, it certainly makes sense, but I don't think that's what they're doing. So are, are they being deceptive? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know that you're legally required to split it out. Um, it's, I'd have to research that. But um, it I, I think ethically you probably should differentiate between organic and inorganic growth. So um, uh, in that respect, I don't think they're being totally transparent if they're referring to their uh, total growth as something that they that they somehow or another got some extra business somewhere and, and, and like a new customer or something like that that, that caused them to double their revenue. So uh, uh, the shareholder should be aware uh, when a company does acquire another company, so they can, if the, if the company itself does not split those revenues out, at least um, uh, th- they can be aware of, of the true growth of the company versus the the growth um, that they a- attributed to the uh, acquisition. Okay, so now let's talk about the other question that I I posed at the beginning of this discussion. Um, is it a good thing that there's all this consolidation? I mean, it's nothing new. It's been happening forever. But it, it just seems like it's picking up steam, you know, with Micrell being acquired by Microchip, by Freescale being acquired by NXP. I just saw that um, uh, linear text being acquired by analog devices. Is, is it good, bad, or indifferent? And I guess, it, I, I guess it depends on whose perspective you're looking at it from, too. That's true. Well, um, from an employee point of view, it's, it's not necessarily viewed good because a lot of people are going to be let go. Um, you know, there's two accounting groups, two legal firms, two audit firms, and so somebody is going to be let go. Uh, and uh, in, in that respect, it's not good for, for the employees. Uh, is it good for the company? If there's synergies in the business that they're in, it could be good because you could scale. In other words, you, you acquire more customers, you got more products, you just are more efficient from, from that standpoint. So, uh, and obviously the investors like it. Generally, though, the, it's the, uh, a target company or the company that's being acquired. Uh, the, the investors there uh, will do relatively well because they're going to get a bump, you know, for the premium. The company that's doing the acquiring oftentimes – uh, the investors lose because it's perceived as not necessarily a creative or good, and as a result, the um, shareholders on on the acquirer side 
uh, could lose money because they um, they invested in a company that now the stock is going to go lower. Because uh, generally that's what happens when when the acquiring company acquires another company. There's a cost associated associated with it, and uh, whether or not those synergies are going to be realized is 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 open uh, for question. And as a consequence, uh, the acquiring company investors. Um, uh, are concerned and they, they sell the stock and it causes the stock to go down. So that's, uh, that's the, the downside for the acquiring company. If the, the two together uh, are going to be greater, bigger, uh, and both are creative, meaning both, both companies uh, do well, uh, then both stocks go up. But that's not usually the case. And what if I'm a customer of, of either of those companies? Should I be looking for uh, a different supplier? If the product lines are um, very similar, in other words, there's, a, there's an overlap, um, that could be a, a, a problem because the company, the acquiring company, may decide to drop a certain product line uh, because the, they, they don't think that's as good as the one they have or vice versa. The, the acquiring company's uh, product line could be, or the, uh, the target company could have a better product than the, than the company that's doing the acquiring. And uh, it, it could be bad for, for the customer because uh, if the products have overlapping uh, technologies, uh, then certainly they're going to drop one or two of the product lines. Okay. So the answer to that question, I guess, is, yeah, I should be concerned. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, I mean it's, it depends. I mean, it, uh, with most companies now, uh, the customers now, uh, have second sources, and so they're less likely to be concerned. But it is a cost to the customer to have to requalify another product. In other words, the, the acquiring company may say, okay, you know, we'll drop our product line uh, that, that you currently use, but you know, we'll help you in qualifying this company's product that, that we're acquiring. Uh, it depends upon how the, the acquiring company treats the uh, customer in that respect. So in many cases, they do help them do the qualification to switch uh, uh, to a different product. But, uh, again, the customer should be concerned, and I've uh, not heard a lot of customers complaining. Uh, you know, sometimes the, the relationship between the uh, company being acquired uh, may, may have been better than the acquiring company, and in those cases, then the customer is upset because he doesn't have the good relationships that he had with the, with the company that was being acquired. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, I think we'll keep it there for this week's segment. That was Ray Zinn. Uh, he is our weekly guest. This is Rich Nass, and hope you all have a great day. Thanks, Ray. You're welcome, Rich. Thanks for inviting me.